short explanation of the differences between bubble saw, insertion saw, mode saw, and big uh, what big O notation is. Uh, you also need to know about quick sort, but uh, maybe I'll make that another video. Um, but essentially, if you get asked a question like this in an A-level exam, um, they will want you to understand what big O notation is, what it means for the algorithms, how it affects their speed or the amount of space they take up to run them. And you also might need to know what situations they might be good in or bad in. And so to understand that, we need to, one, look at what big O notation is and, and the different time complexities. Two, need to look into the code a little bit and actually see them running on a performance basis. So let me just take this paint tool and I'm going to draw um, an axis. This will be my Y and then I'm going to draw um, X axis here like that. And then I'm going to, oh no, I want that in black. Uh, and then I'm going to get the pencil and I'm going to draw some of these graphs. So this is the right, so I need to make that a bit thicker. Um, let me make that thicker, get the size. So um, this here, we would say is exponential, is two to the power n, or O, and then in brackets, to the power n. So that's exponential. Every time, every time you add another n, it doubles in in its time that it's going to take to do it. So, for example, uh, down here on this axis, on the y-axis, we've got time. On the x-axis, we have n or number of items. Yeah. So equals items. It's hard to write with a mouse. Uh, so that's at two to power n exponential. This, which is bubble sort and insertion sort, is um, big O to uh, n squared, right? So that means it's not quite as bad as exponential, but it's pretty bad. Um, and if we keep adding n on, um, it will get very, very slow. Uh, and then you have, uh, let's choose a different color. It's going to get too confusing. And then you have this. Uh, linear, which only really comes in uh, handy when you want to talk about, um, say, but with um, bubble sort, uh, so with um, not sort, but uh, a binary search or linear search. So linear search, if I search for a list of items, I had to go from the beginning to the end until I found it, would be a linear search. I search one after the other, after the other, after the other. So however many things I've got in that list, it's going to take that many time steps. So that's O to the N. Um, and then you've got these, uh, the merge sort and the uh, quick sort. And those are log N problems. So a log curve kind of goes up like that and then it flattens out. So it doesn't matter how many uh, number of items we add in, it doesn't get too bad. So we say that is O to the, I'm gonna undo this, O to the, n uh, log n um and then and so that's where we'd see our, our merge and our so let me put that in text so this is and i'll make the text a little bit smaller so we can fit it in okay, it's 18 merge and quick sort there uh, um o n log n time complexity problems there like here and then over here uh, we've got bubble and insertion sort and they are o n to the how when i do a power and you do a hat a symbol n squared we'll just do it, leave it like that So the O N squared problems. And then this is like a linear problem. And the final one you need to know about, uh, which I'll put in uh, yellow or green here, is just a flat line. Um, and wherever that line intersects with the Y axis, 
um, is your time complexity. And this one is going to be constant. And so I'm just going to type, I should have done this originally, constant time or space, depending on what you're talking about, is O to the one. And none of these algorithms that I'm talking about are actually like bubble sort insertions or, or merge or quick sort have that time complexity, but there are some algorithms in the future which we'll learn about, like hash tables, um, where you or, or arrays, to be honest with you, when you want to go to an item in an array, if you know where it is, you just go to that index. So you go direct to it. Um, but, uh, you know, with hash tables, when you want to access an item in a hash table, you just have to apply the algorithm to the code and it will take you directly to where that thing is stored. So there's no need to search it or or whatever. But um, but these are the different types of big O notations. Um, so I'll save that. Big O. Uh, right. And then the only thing we've got to do now is to try and understand what this means in terms of complexity in code and which ones are better. So we've already looked at insertion sort. Um, where the code is fairly simple. It's quite straightforward. It's just two nested loops inside of each other. And we're going through an array item by item, and then we're going back in the array to see whether comparing it. And then there's also bubble sort where we're, we're looking at each item and then swapping them. Um, if we were going to do a merge sort though, the code is very, very much more complex, uh, mainly because we use this idea of recursion um, recursion is calling yourself. So you see this merge sort, this part of the merge sort function takes in an unsorted list, a temporary list to put the new items into, and then it has a, a left star and a right end pointer. So um, what we're doing is uh, we know where the end of the array is, where the beginning of the array is, and we're then going to the middle point, and we're basically um, we're basically calling ourselves here. With, uh, from So we've got this right end and we've got this middle point and we keep calling ourselves here until the list gets to an item of size one. So that where we start on the left is if it's ever greater than where we start on the right, then we know we've got to a, a list of size one. So we're, we've got this array here and, and then we do uh, the left side. So we go from left start to the middle and we break that side up until it gets to list size one. But every time we call ourselves, we're having to store in the computer's memory the state of the program, which it was before, because we at some point when we meet this exit condition where um, where we've split all the lists up into size one, we then need to start merging them back together. And we're going to start from that place that we last left. So we're having to store the unsorted list, the empty array, left and start pointers, all those variables are getting stored in the computer's memory so that when it recursively unwinds, it will be able to um, it be able to know where to get started from so it can then start merging them back together. And I'll put a link to this code in the video below. I won't go into this too much in detail, but maybe you can step through this code and see if you can just try and understand it. Um, and if not, no worries too much. You're not going to get asked about that in the exam. But it is important that you see how complex this code is and understand the idea that merge sort and quick sort, um, the problems with these, merge and quick, they're complicated to code. They take up a lot of space. So for smaller lists, they don't make sense. Right. Uh, why is that not able to edit that? Yeah, so they don't make sense. But with bubble and insertion sort, um, simple code, low memory, but print, but very slow with larger lists. Stretch that out, maybe you can see that a bit better. So, merge a quick sort. 
uh, they're great for very big lists, as you'll see when I demonstrate this in a minute. Um, and that's the main advantage of it. Yeah, it's more complicated, but when you're talking about sorting a lot of data, um, it's it's much slower, it, it's much faster. So what this code does here basically is it generates a random array um, of a thousand items um, and it tests how long it takes to sort it. And then it adds on another thousand items and another thousand items and another thousand items. And, it, and it's timing how long insertion sort will take to sort that list. So if I run that, um, we'll see. And uh, basically when, when the uh, time to sort it gets greater than one second, the loop will quit. So we're going to say that one second sort time is too long. So anything under it is fine. So we're trying to find out how many items the insertion sort will be able to do before it gets to this time limit. And you can see here it didn't take too long. When we go 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 13,000, when we get to 14,000, well, 13,000, we're already taking longer than the second. So uh, I'm now going to uncomment the loop for it in which we're testing merge sort with exactly the same data um and i'll i'll comment that one out just so it doesn't run and can and confuse us that bracket out too now i'm going to run the merge sort on this ever increasing the number of items by 1000 and see how far we can get up to before the loop will quit before uh, merge sort becomes inefficient and we've got too many items in it. I know a student in the class earlier got up to 600,000, so this might take some time. We're at 100,000, 105. I think we could have increased the uh, number of items by a little bit more. Um, and we're only on 0 0.1 of a second. And we're already on 200,000. So you can see by a factor of probably several hundred times, merge sort is a lot, lot faster. We're on 250,000 items. Um, we're on 200 and, well, I mean, it's just, it's just performing very, very well. So obviously whoever wrote this code is a good coder because they managed to implement merge sort in quite an efficient way. And, you know, we're now on, 329, 230, but I might even just stop the program and increase this uh, array length thing to 100,000, add on 100,000 every time just to see how high we can get to. We could be here for a while actually, but you could see essentially I'm now demonstrating to you the advantages of merge sort. Yes, complicated code. Yes, it's taking up more space because it's got to store the state of the it's got to store the state of the program before it um, every time it calls itself because it's a recursive routine. But the but the trade off for that is that we even with huge amounts of items, we're almost at 500,000 now. It's still only taking half a second to sort. That one took 0.9 of a second. I, to be honest, I think the only thing that is going to slow this down is uh, is the fact that I'm running this on a web browser on Replit. Perhaps if you ran this on your computer at home, you'd find that it would be going possibly for millions. But, and that's the advantage of this log curve. Like the ever increasing number of N doesn't exponentially increase the time. It just increases it um, uh, ever so slightly, gradually, gradually, gradually. And we're already on 520,000. And we're only on we're averaging about half a second here. And I think this is going to carry on and on and on and on. And on. So it's a very efficient algorithm. And uh, to be honest, I think that demonstrates it. So I'm going to put the link below for this code so you can run it, copy it, fork it into your own replit and play around with it or run it on your computer. Also going to put uh, the link to this article where I've got some questions here that you need to sort of uh, work your way through to make sure that you've understood it. Um, and uh, and I'll, obviously the video link will be in there as well. And everything will be linked in there, So, And let's see, is this still running? It's still running. We're on over 600,000 and we haven't even 
we haven't even approached a second. So have fun playing with that. And try and look through that merge sort code if you want to challenge yourself and see if you can understand what's going on. Maybe write out the steps, you know, write a trace table with all the, the data. In it. 